so today I'm going to show two samples that I built uh, around a help desk adaptive card scenario. These, uh, my name is Derek Cash Peterson. I'm a principal architect at Simpraxis Consulting. I am based out of Iceland. Uh, let's see what else. I've been doing SharePoint for a really long time. Um, if you have any, you know, if you want to contact me or have any questions at the end, um, that's my blog and my Twitter and LinkedIn. So there's a couple of things that I want to show in this demo. The first, and we've seen a lot of ACE demos on uh, on this call, but the first is how to leverage multiple quick view cards, how to just navigate back and forth between them, um, but also to show some stuff that we haven't necessarily seen, which is the newer geolocation functionality. So how you can share your location in an ACE and then consume that and do something with it. Um, and also to show the media upload functionality. So you can now um, you know, trigger a button to open up the picker on either the mobile device or on your computer and add an image or a file. So with that, we're just going to go into the demo part because um, that's really what folks want to see. So here you can see there are two aces. We've got the create a new help desk ticket ace and then the list of pending help desk tickets. So they do have a little bit of configuration to them. Uh, the first one. They're both configured the exact same way when you edit them. It asks for a Bing Maps API key. You don't need an API key to use the geolocation functionality. Um, I will show you what I'm using it for in a little bit. And the other is because I'm uploading images, I want to be able to store those images somewhere like a SharePoint library. So I added in functionality that checks to see if the current user has the permissions to actually add a library. If you don't have permissions, you just don't see this, and then the button doesn't show up to allow users to do that. So I'm going to click Add Library, and then in the background, it's going to go configure the library. And I already have the API key, so I'm going to go in and just publish this. And because I want to look at it in preview mode, because it looks pretty, you can see. So I'm going to click the Create New Help Desk, and this particular ACE, like I would audience target this to everyone in the company. You could fix this so that it connected to ServiceNow. You could figure this to go to a SharePoint list. This just holds data and goes to a Teams app to show deep linking capabilities, but you could take the service layer and push this wherever you need it to be. So here it randomly creates an incident number. Uh, it grabs my name, it provides the image, it gives the open date. And then there's some drop down. So this is going to be an incident. And this is high priority. So I'm going to say help. I can't log in. And now I can either discard the request or I can click next. I'm going to click next. And now it's going to pull all this information forward. We're navigating to a new card. And because I have the Bing Maps API key, I am showing a button and I'm going to add the location. This is using the geolocation functionality. Um, and it, it brings up the geolocation screen to show your address. And this is the location that I'm picking. If I click share location, this is going to now trigger an event in the adaptive card. And this is what I'm using um, Bing Maps for is to actually get the street locate the street address. Now for the image upload, we're going to click the button and this is going to open up the dialog to choose the image. When I do that, I can pick some recent images that I've been. There we go. And now I can select this image. And in the background, it's processing this image and it's saving it into the SharePoint site that I just created uh, to the library in the SharePoint site that I just created. And you can add multiple images and then I'm going to go ahead and submit. This card. And this is going to open up the Teams app, but again, you can use this to, you know, to link into your existing help desk system and to save the data there. Now, what happened to that image in the background? I'm using PMPJS to push the data into a picture library that we created when we configured it, and now it's there and I can go do something with it. So that's the help desk create ticket. Now, if you are working on help desk tickets, you may want to use this ACE. This one lists out the ones that you have assigned to you. So 
if you click it, now this isn't connected. This is meant for sample data. So this is particularly just pulling in random data. It's not connected to the two. You can show the different help desk tickets that are assigned to you. Click on one. You can see this one is overdue because it was opened on the 28th. The information about it, you can see the image that was attached to it when the person created the card initially. Um, but again, now we can use that latitude and longitude that we got from the get location functionality and we can click get directions. And this is going to open up Bing Maps directions and say I'm at the Seattle Marriott because this is going to be an in person call. I can then go get directions for how to get to that particular office and fix that issue. Same thing with the image upload as we saw in the last card. I can come in and the image is just overwrite, so I'm going to use the same image. Um, and now you can see it's attached to the screen. But I'm going to say I went, I took a picture, everything's OK, and now I'm going to close. And now you can see the tasks open up. So that's the functionality in a, in a quick and dirty nutshell. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over to Visual Studio Code. And now you can see. So I'm going to, so here, because we're using multiple cards, I'm going to use this one as the example here. So when we click over and this is the quick view card. And we have a button called next. Now that next button needs to do something to push us to the next card. So when the buttons we're going to use this action dot submit. So you can see I'm setting the label here called next button. And this has a string attached to it called that says next um, with an ID of confirm. When this gets called, when you click on this button, it activates the on action method. The on action method basically processes any clicks, um, most of the clicks that are coming from the cards. So whether it's a submit action or the geolocation or the upload media, it's got to, it gets to do something with it. So here, because I'm submitting it, I'm taking that confirm, I'm checking for that confirm ID, and then I'm setting the values to an object in state. So I'm setting the form elements, category and urgency from that form and setting the property to new and then putting that in the state and updating the state. But in order to move to a different card, we need to use the quick view navigator. So we're taking the quick view navigator here and we're calling the push function and we're passing in the ID of the add location view. And this gets set in the initialization for the adaptive card extension. So then we do that and we move over to the add location screen. I'm just going to do this real quick. So we have something to follow along with. And so this is the next screen. This is the add location screen. So looking at the template now, I had said I sort of gave it a little bulletproof. I checked to see if you have the a Bing Maps key. So I'm using the when attribute and I'm saying if there is a key, show the button. And if there isn't a key, don't. So if you don't have it, no big deal. You just won't see that particular button. And then I'm using select action and calling one of the new types called Viva Action .get location. And then we can press in a few, just one parameter for this particular one, and that's choose location on the map, um, which means I get to move that little dot around so I can choose that. There's additional logic here for the image. Um, I'm setting a flag uh, in when I load the web part, I'm checking the permissions for the users and I'm setting a flag called can upload. So again, I'm using this when functionality to show and hide different elements on the adaptive card based on whether or not the user has permissions or the ability to do X, Y, or Z. And then I am using the Viva Actions .select media type for this particular button. That's the button that is going to open up the media window. And I have the ability to select, can I allow multiple images to be captured? Um, what types of files do I want? I can restrict it to JPEGs. I can restrict it to PNGs. You can set up a whole bunch of different stuff to, to do that. And then again, where I said that on action method processes all those things in the TypeScript file for that, for the on action for the add location template, 
we've got two different elements in here. The first is we're checking if you are the get location action, the get location action returns a latitude and a longitude. So you're going to get, you know, 45 and negative 122. I am saving those in my ticket in state. And then this is where I wanted to go and get the street address. The geolocation functionality just out of the box gives you that latitude and longitude, but I wanted to make sure that I had the street address. So I'm calling a function in my service layer called get location, which calls the Big Maps API to get that data back and to get the street address and to send it back. And I'm saving that in the ticket itself, and then I'm setting the ticket in the state. Where I am using the select media function, I'm getting all the different attachments that came through. So if you have more than one, if you processed, you know, four images and uploaded them together, I'm processing the image data, creating the URL, and then I'm saving that data into the SharePoint list with this get image, this add image function. Um, and you can see I'm using PMPJS to push that image into the SharePoint library. And the end result is what you see here, and then pushing the data into that library. And that is all I have, so I can hand it back. And if there are any questions, I can answer them in the chat. So one question, which is actually kind of interesting on the solution in here, this is really cool, and, and this is a great solution. Um, well, the design is coming from Microsoft. We are partnering together with some Praxis on this, uh, so we're kind of working together with Derek. And then thank you, Derek, on, on creating the, the designs and the examples. And, and we're working on updating the gallery solution in the store as well. Uh, can you actually point to the solution in the store uh, just to showcase where people can get this uh, example scenario? Yeah. Let's go to AppSource, appsource.microsoft.com. So if you're in here, you can search for it. If you search for Viva, there is a the adaptive card extension gallery right here. So you can take this and you can provision this directly in your tenant right from here. As Vesa mentioned, we have a update coming with all that geolocation stuff. I'm just waiting for final approval from the store folks, uh, but this has all of the all 14 of these demos that are uh, sample aces that we've I've demoed a few times on here. Yeah. And and just to again recap on that one, so they're not really functioning end-to-end -end scenarios because they don't actually work. They don't integrate to a CRM system or a ticketing system. They show a scenario, so they're there for storytelling yeah. and, and for decorating the dashboard. So you can actually kind of have an easier discussion with the uh, business decision makers and say, hey, this is an example of how your dashboard, dashboard could look like. Yeah. So we're kind of adding an additional designs. Designs are coming from Microsoft and then as said, we partner with some practice consulting who are really great on implementing anything in SharePoint framework or for Viva, and then we push that to the store. Um, and the last but, update should be coming in, I think, a few days. Now, yes. one question related on this one, that, that the solution what you showed was really, really cool. And there was a question related on where did you store uh, the security? Uh, so being mapped keys, where, where are those persistent? That's an interesting question point as well. So and for this example, I just used it as a property on the on the web part. I mean, on the ACE. Yeah, and so, as it's a property in an ACE, it gets automatically stored uh, within the storage layer from yes. Microsoft side. Yeah. Now, the how we would actually do this most likely in production, uh, if we would build something like that, uh, would be that you could actually take advantage of, for example, the tenant properties, which is a in a capability where we have an API. So in the ACE, you can just request, hey, do I have the uh, license key already in a tenant properties? Oh, I do. Fine, I can actually behave uh, differently. Or I would, do I have the maps API key in there? Okay, I do. Let's take advantage of that. Um, so that's probably the easiest way to do that uh, from a license key or save storage, uh, because then mm -hmm. the code can read it, but they cannot modify that. Yeah. So. That's the one thing I wanted to point out. So um, while the the entire solution is able to be installed from the App Source Gallery, if you're you know if you're interested in how we did this. There's a GitHub repo in the instructions here. It's also in the samples repo on pnp.github.io. 
and you can see all the source code for what I did. So if you just want to go pick it apart or build your own, by all means, you can go in and grab and grab the code. We tried to build the service layer. There is a service layer in there, so you can just sort of pull out and modify that, you know, to suit your individual needs. Really good. Thank you. Just recapping again those assets and everything. Thank you, Derek. Really, really cool stuff. Thank you.